Hey guys, uh, Kevin here. I am doing a video. Um, uh, I just did a pickups video for 2022, uh, at least the footwear part of it. And I kind of wanted to do a video just since it just released on the Terrell Winston Club C as well as a comparison with a few different Club C's that I have um, just because there are so many different versions of the Club C as well as they are all slightly different and I'll let you guys know which one is like the one that I prefer the most as well as uh, certain ones that I like or dislike etc. So let's get started with the shoe that I have in mind which is the Terrell Winston Club C. So just quick look around on the box. Uh, I did pay for this a little bit early. Um, the retail was 120. I did pay a little bit above that, about 140 before release, uh, just to get it early. And also, I know, like you guys know what store this is with the tag at the bottom. It's Bodega. Bodega probably backdoored or something like that. But you know, it's fine, it's whatever. But it comes in an all black Reebok box. Uh, like nothing in particular that's like super special. Um, I'll go into the concept and the ideation of the shoe in a little bit, but the shoe comes with the classic, just all white aesthetics. And something that Adidas and Reebok has been doing is that they've been using actually twine, which is really nice instead of the plastic punch hole. And the box, very simple, comes with a set of really nice white laces, as well as a set of cream laces that would match the look of the yellow sole. Um, I opted for the classic white. I just think it looks great with the tongue also being white. So let's look around the shoe itself. So as you guys can see, the shoe itself is quite, quite nice. Um, it is an all white leather construction. On the left shoe, there is this alternate uh, New York, I guess kind of Yankees-esque logo. Uh, that one is, I'll talk about it later, but it's sort of, his homage to New York and his love for it, even though he has moved his studio to Detroit. And it's a very, very nice, thick cut of leather, as you guys can kind of see. The, the cut of leather is probably one of the thickest that I've seen on a Club C. It's quite, quite nice. Uh, I have worn this pretty much as soon as it got in and yeah, it is just quite nice. The cutout, the cutout of the shoe, which is slightly different, is just this canvas material. Very, very minimal, very, very simple. And on the back, it has real cow fur. I know it's supposed to mimic pony hair, which I'll talk about in a bit, uh, but real cow fur, it's mentioned in the box they had like a little sticker as well as the classic the athlete's shoe but it has his signature on the tongue and one of the coolest little details that i think really kind of ties some of this together is slightly green translucent outsole that is super super cool that has his signature underneath now outside of that if you really didn't care much about the idea and um, you know, like Terrell, Winston's, I guess, whole concept in general, you could probably even miss it. But a lot of the details on the shoe is immaculate. So talking about, he, he did an interview with N Clothing talking about his inspirations as well as his, uh, like works of art. More recently, he's been working with a lot of, uh, sports paraphernalia, uh, you know, like deflated, deflated basketball uh, artwork, as well as, you know, like basketball hoop netting. The meaning of the artwork can be really 
denoted and given meaning by the viewer themselves. Like whether it be uh, like you're looking at his his basketball artwork and see either a broken dream, which is something that he's mentioned. He wanted to go into the NBA and he just like wasn't able to do it. Um, as well as you can see, you know, you can see an injury in those deflated basketballs. You can see even like success or somebody has really loved those basketballs and they used it literally until it popped. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like an interesting uh, kind of like intersection between sports as well as the, the user or the person that has a relationship with a basketball, just the idea of a basketball and kind of applying meaning to it. So I thought it was quite um, kind of interesting. This isn't exactly related to it. The Club C, it is probably more related to the question mid, which I will be coming, or like it'll be coming in um, probably like sometime next week. Please like comment down below if you guys wanted to see a separate video on that one. But I just thought the club seat comparison would be really nice. During this end interview, he was talking about how uh, the shoe is essentially not supposed to necessarily be the artwork itself, but it's supposed to be like his shoe that he would wear like every day. Like he didn't want to do like a deflated basketball shoe or anything. He didn't. He wouldn't wear that. And he's also mentioned that club seats have really been a part of his daily studio wardrobe, his uniform for years and years, like even way before like Reebok and them uh, like decided to do a partnership. Also touching upon his history with a Club C, he said his grandfather actually really liked Club C's. He was definitely more of a dress shoe guy from what he's mentioned, but whenever he played tennis or was gardening or doing some other like recreational activity, which was how sneakers used to be uh, used, um, is he would choose a club C and he said that his grandfather was always a pretty fashionable guy and it just sort of carried through. Uh, I personally think that the club C is probably the most versatile shoe that Reebok has made. It's so, um, it's, I feel like the club C is what the Stan Smith was during the mid 2000s and this is sort of the future rendition of it and an even further abstraction of it would be the New Balance 550. So. Getting back to the point, um, so the concept that I talked about where uh, he had sort of this like imitation uh, like pony hair, uh, like, which is actual cow fur, dyed cow fur, is that he said he really liked this show with like, like Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre, where they were talking about like a quote was, um, why do you put uh, like blinders on a racehorse is so that if you keep on looking there and here, uh, you will like trip and then you'll miss a step and then you'll trip. While if you have those blinders on, you will just continually go forward and like succeed. So that's his sort of mantra, like he said, is that he thinks of it as like a racehorse where he's not really in competition with anybody else. He's not looking at the horse on his right, on his left, etc. He's just going straight on his own path, which I thought was a cool nod. Um, I thought it was like kind of like, oh, that's, that's clever type of thing, as well as this New York logo, that one, he calls it his noodles, which is New York doodles. And he said himself, he just thought it looked really sick on the tongue tab. And I have to say, I agree. I really like this tongue tab. I kind of wish they did it for both, but I'm sure Reebok also wanted their name on the tongue tab, um, as yeah. And also like one of the biggest things that I've noticed in comparison to other club C's is that the finishing on this shoe is probably some of the best that I've seen, really. I think the shape of it is amazing. I think the QC was also very amazing. I also think the extra like stitched and nice tongue is also so, so good. I really think that this is probably one of the most perfect club C's that I've had. But before I get, ahead of myself and start comparing, you know, like, like without even introducing whatever club C's that I do have. Let me go ahead. Here is the Sneeze Reebok Club C Revenge, which came out a while ago. I have worn these quite a bit. Jam Club C's. 
which every single board has posted to exhaustion, as well as uh, relatively recently, the Eames Reebok Club C. So, to, I guess, an untrained eye, these are all the same shoe. Uh, but I will have to say that they all have enough differences to really warrant um, a comparison as a really more deep dive into it. Let's start off with the Eames Reebok Club C. This one was the most recently released uh, bigger collaboration before Terrell's um, Club C. Uh, like this one is a partnership with the Eames House. Uh, very, very good. I've done a specific review on this. I still think that this is an amazing value proposition, especially if you wanted a higher quality Eames product, or not Eames product, a higher quality Reebok product while also having some sort of specialty to it. Having the Eames name of it, having sort of that same vintage feel of it, of like the yellowed tongue and uh, the Eames insole, as well as just a better quality leather. I think the Eames value proposition is quite nice just because a lot of the time you can find this for either retail or even under retail at some retailers. Uh, and then here is the Jown Reebok Club C. This one was really the one that started it all. Um, and this one I think is really the most different other than the Revenge. Um, the, the Jound Club C, at least the original one, the white and gray one, I believe the beige one are closer to the Eames Reebok, but the white and gray one, this one I think is a completely different mold from the rest of them, and I can show you guys the comparison. You might even be able to see it, but this one, really the one that I think really brought the Club C back a bit more into uh, like relevance, or at least got it kind of going. And here's the Sneeze Reebok Club C. This one is the Club C Revenge. So they're all slight differences, such as there is no uh, side like window panel, as well as the back heel is a back heel is like a patent leather. Um, but like other than that, most of it is pretty much the same. And then finally, the one that I was talking about just right now. So now just talking purely about quality leather. I genuinely am a little bit torn, I would say. Um, so the Jowns, my biggest issue with the Jowns is the durability of the leather just isn't as uh, tough or as good as these two, in my opinion. So the Jowns did have like a, a matte feel to them after you wear them for a bit, but it's very, very prone to snags and cuts as I will show you. These are an older shoe given, um, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but I have had four or five pairs of these and they all, with like some decent wear, they all get some sort of leather damage in the upper. And I don't know whether or not it's just the durability of the leather. The leather still feels great, but there's almost always some like tearing on the upper uh, like leather, like whether it be the eye stays or the toe especially. Um, but I think the durability of the leather of the Jones isn't as great, but it does have that classic look, that classic uh, like look without kind of having like a pre-yellowed effect. This one has that like, almost like that artistic director vibes. But I do think that the leather quality of the Eames isn't as great as the Terrells, in my opinion. And the new buck on the uh, Sneeze Reebok uh, Club C Revenges, these ones uh, are decent. I would say it really depends on sort of the look that you're going for. I do like the blacked out tongue. And of the, of the rest of the Reebok shoes, I think just straight out of the box, I think the Club C Revenges had the best like laces, uh, it came with a cream lace, which is actually what I put the Jowns on, um, as well as a black lace, but I do think the black lace works better for this, and the cream laces are probably the best on the market. I kid you not, I don't know where to find another lace that is as good as the Club C Revenges. Those are so good. 
um, like like much better than the Terrells. Even though the, the Terrells is probably like a second place. I'd probably put, in terms of like laces, I know this is stupid, but Sneeze Reebok, Terrell, and then these two are a tie because they just come with the normal poly lace. Uh, actually, maybe I'll give the edge to the Eames because it comes with three different lace options and this one just came with two, a white and a cream, both just the normal poly. Um, in terms of pure aesthetics, I will say that Pure aesthetically, I do think that the Terrells uh, like really do it for me. Um, the Terrells are just such a classic, and I really liked that finished tongue. Um, the finished where they s s like I guess stitch it on the inside, they fold it in with the nice leather tongue, while the rest of the Club C's have like a nylon tongue, except for this one. This one has like almost like a ballistic nylon, I would say. But these two have like just a classic thin nylon, which is true to the OG style, I think this really kind of almost like elevates the Club C into a much nicer shoe. Uh, in terms of like leather thickness as well, I will give the up to the Terrell uh, Reeboks. I just think that the, the leather that they used in this is really like way, 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 way better than all these ones. If you're considering maybe durability, thickness, uh, etc. And also for the price proposition of 120, I really don't think you can beat that. Uh, for the Jounds, I do think that this one, if you guys really do care about like recognition or you care about sustaining value, I do think that the Jounds will have a better sustaining value um, compared to pretty much like everything on this table. Um, although I do see that the Terrells becoming a cult classic in like a year or so, a year or two, I do think that the Jounds will pretty much be every single artistic director in my bio sort of inspo shoe, uh, where I do see this, I mean, prices on this for new, a thousand plus, which I think is crazy, but um, just because they probably didn't release much of it. But um, I do think that the Reebok Club C also has a very different shape than the rest of the Club Cs. Uh, like this one isn't as high as well as a bit more slim down. Just for pure comparison's sake, you can pretty much see the difference in the shape. This one is definitely a bit more flat and a bit more low, while this one is a bit more prominent. You can even see that with the Eames. Oop. See that with the Eames? Bit more up, bit more prominent. You can even see, pay attention to the mudguard. The mudguard does come down a bit sharper on the Jounds. I think this is an older mold, as well as if you look at the spacing on this ankle area. Yeah, pretty much a huge difference. The stitching, stitching there. You can, you can definitely tell that this is a little bit different. I guess it's a bit, a bit more slimmed down, but I don't know, in terms of like, actual wear of the shoe i don't think there's like a massive difference uh i do think that the quality control on the jowns was probably better than most of these other shoes i haven't had an issue with the terrells yet but i do think that my eames there was like slight quality control issues like um stitching like an uneven stitching i can show you guys even here if you look at the you look at right here it's kind of uneven if you look at here it's a bit more flat a bit more straight so there definitely are some uh, stitching variations but if you look at the Terrells the Terrells are pretty much uh, straight stupid straight actually but if you're looking at it from a pure value like will this accrue in value I do think that the Jones will only get more expensive as time goes on. That's what I've seen. I've I've sold pairs at 300, I've bought pairs at 200, yeah. So those these shoes have definitely just like skyrocketed value. I don't understand exactly, but um, even the cream ones, the beige ones are going for a lot now. Now, in my opinion, I would rank them the Terrell Winston, first place, Jones, second, Eames, third, 
and the Club C Revenges 4. The Club C Revenges, I think, are an amazing beater shoe, and if you can get them for under retail, even at $80, I think this is a fantastic deal, especially if you want something that is slightly different from your all white Club C, and you want something with a little bit of an edge. It does have like a metallic uh, tongue uh, tag, but I just cut it off and I think it looks super, super clean, super sick. The Eames is an amazing uh, cheaper alternative to the Jounds or the Terrell, and some of this can actually go for under retail. Um, the leather won't be as good as the Jounds or the Terrell, but if you really like the Eames ideation, as well as if having like a special box that you can kind of display, because you can, you really can display this shoe box in like your cabinets or even have it like out on like your studio. I think this is probably the best box that Reebok has made for a club seat. If you want something like that, then I think the Eames is amazing for you. If you care about value retention and if you care really about if you like Jound in general and you just wanted the most hype uh, Club C, I would recommend just the Jounds. Whether that be the gray or the uh, beige color, that's up to you. The beige color is definitely gonna feel more like the Eames uh, in terms of quality as well as the shape of it. But if you wanna go for like the OG OG, you can spend the big bucks for it and then maybe you'll be rewarded in the future if the shoe ever goes to like three grand or something crazy like that. But these ones I think are great if you wanted the name recognition, you wanted all that. Now, if you just want an overall great product and just flat out superior build, physically built uh, Club C, I think the Terrell Winston Club C is the Club C for you and Club C for me. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this wasn't too long of a video, too long of a banter. Um, I will try and come back with a bit more videos, a bit more video ideas, and I'm still finishing up the apartment, so I won't be ready to show you guys my apartment so far, um, but uh, I will hopefully get it in a state where I feel comfortable sharing. Um, so yeah, I thank you again so much for your support throughout the past few months, and I will come back even stronger. So thank you guys again, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.